Razavan here for fighthype.com with my man, Mr. Jenkins. Yeah. Mr. Jennings, how yeah. are we? Everything's good, man. Yeah, just uh, out in London, you know, spending some time out here, you know, across the pond, you know. I know you usually come over whenever Derek fights. You're obviously very, yeah. very good friends, yeah. um, supporting the sparring. We've seen actually some stuff that you've done in the yeah, past. Yeah, yeah, quite yeah. intense. It's a, it's a lot more to see, but we got that. We got that on. Uh, that's in the archives. That ain't that ain't for sure, yo. Obviously, he was supposed to fight with Joseph Parker. Right. Obviously, the stylistically, it's a completely different fight with David Price. Right. Height, a lot of movement from Joe. Joe moves around a lot. Joe fights 12 rounds quite comfortably. David Price is known to kind of just slow down after five, six rounds. But uh -huh. have you helped Der uh, Derek with preparations for someone like David Price? Um. Well. Well, of course, you know, it was like we are already we are already like, you know, in the middle of what we're working on. But, you know, Derek is like a, you know, Derek is a machine. So, I'm a machine as well. So, if you have if you have a good machine beside you to push you to your limits, then that's then that's that's good in that particular aspect. Plus, I bring a lot more to the table than people than people actually uh, know. So um, we were working, you know, working, working alongside each other. When he got tired, I made sure that I kept going. So he would have to give it the extra mile, you know. Um, so we complimented each other, and it was, it's always good, you know. The energy is always good, uh, and just the fact that you know you have somebody that's alongside of you that's doing what you think that you can't do sometimes, you know. And sometimes I see him do stuff, and I'd be like, damn, I gotta do it. But you know, um, it's it's. It's been a compliment for each other, and uh, it's, it's always worked good, and the chemistry is great. How long has Derek gone left? So it seems like you seem like he's coming to the end of his career, and then boom, he gets his next victory, and he just he's in a rocket. And we're talking here now about potentially Usyk uh, in the not yeah. distant future. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, it's, it's I can't I can't really decide how much he has left. You know, um, but we do know that he has a lot left. Um, you know, having a lot left and, you know, being to the decision, coming to the decision where you feel as though I'm done, that's, that, that's, that could be a mental thing. That has nothing to do with physicality. So, you know, um, but we just, well, we, knew, we do know that he has a lot left and, uh, you know, his mindset is, is, is fuck it, this is business, you know, you know, he has a, yeah, he, he has a great mindset, he has a great strategy and, uh, you know, when he put himself to work, you know, he does a good job. What is the latest review? Uh, how's the career? What are the plans? Uh, yeah, well, the career, the career is the career. You know, it's life. You know, don't treat your business better than your body. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more so just like doing these things in life. So we got the the Game Changers documentary. You know, uh, it's it's the most it's the highest selling documentary on iTunes and iTunes history. Um, it just was released on the 16th to Netflix. Um, I'm getting crazy messages about it, crazy uh, crazy um, feedback about it. Um, it's just something that you know we're kind of busy with right now, and. Um, of course, you know, staying in the gym, working, doing all these things, being a man, being a father, being a brother. You know, uh, both of my brothers that you know they've been released from prison after doing 13 years. You know, that was something that I had to you know embark on. And then it's like, damn, I'm coming over to London and now I'm away for you know two, three months at a time. And I'm like, damn, I want to spend time with that. So you know, just trying to balance out life. But you know, the career, it, it is where it is. I'm still, I still get calls, and if the calls don't seem too good, I still know how to hang the phone up. You know what I'm saying? And um, I don't let things, I don't let certain things control me. Um, and you know I'm still good with my team. You know everybody's still intact. And you know we just we just playing this thing how, how it play out. You know we some business as well. You know um, but my life must go on. And um, I'm having fun doing some things that you know I always wanted to do. David Hay mentioned there that we cannot take David Price lightly because right. when Andy Ruiz came in at short notice, we yeah, saw sure. what he did. Now obviously that rematch takes place mm -hmm. in about six weeks' time in Saudi Arabia. Right. Um, you've been in the division a long time. You know your boxing. You know your heavyweight boxing. Uh -huh. How do you see that fight? And, and there's a lot of pictures going around at the moment. Mm -hmm. You've got slimming out a little bit, mm -hmm. losing a bit of weight. Mm -hmm. How serious does Andy Ruiz take this fight now? Because he's, he's a multi-millionaire overnight. I mean, we, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not around him to understand how serious he takes it. But I'm quite sure he's not taking it lightly. Um, you know, he, he he's he, he's probably just doing what he's what he's used to doing. Um, it got him to this point. You know, it got him. You know, through his career the way you know the way it was. I don't think he might 
I don't think he might want to change anything. He might want to up some things up, but he might not want to, you know, remove anything. So, you know, so I can't really tell exactly, you know, where he is, but I'm quite sure Joshua's way more focused. Um, you know, Joshua is like, wow, like, I got to get this back. And, you know, Joshua's a, Joshua's a cool dude, you know, um, and, and I'm sure, quite sure he's going to see to it that, you know, that he get what he get, he, he get what he deserves and he gets his belts back. But so, what about from a psychological perspective? Uh -huh. There are a lot of rumors that he wasn't well, but we don't know that. Uh -huh. AJ says he was fine. But going to a rematch uh -huh. straight away, it doesn't happen very often you go to a rematch and you're successful. Uh -huh. But when he goes in that rematch, and let's say Andy Ruiz hits him once, does uh -huh. that psychologically affect the fight? Um, psychologically. Do you start thinking about the first fight? For, for, no, for, but yeah, I mean, it could. It's possible, very possible. Maybe maybe more highly possible than, le than less likely. But. You know, uh, that all depends on the type of fighter, you know, the type of mentality, the strength of your focus. You know, um, a very focused fighter is, you know, is a fighter that's, that's very hard to beat mentally, you know. Um, and then, you know, it's fighting. So, you know, you, you, you already seen the worst. So, therefore, you know, when the, worst, when, it, when, when the worst comes up at that point again, you know, it's like it's nothing that you haven't seen before. So, it's just like, okay, I know what to do now. So, depending on the strength and the amount of focus that he's put into this training camp, put into the loss, put into getting it back, put into all of these things, that would be the difference. And um, a person like Joshua, he seems to be a very focused individual, he seems to be a very disciplined individual, and I'm quite sure that, you know, that wouldn't be the case of, you know, him crumbling and falling back once once those type of things um, reoccur. You know, um, and I'm, I'm, you know, it's a game plan. You know, it's just, this, this is what champions do at the same time, and we also got to understand, you know, it's, it's, it's fighting, it's a sport, you know, and some, some, some situations you have to revisit a hundred times. And maybe that 101 time, you'd be like, I'm not going to let this happen now one more time. So, you know, um, it might not have to happen twice for, for, for Joshua. You know, um, it may have only happened once, and that was in a previous fight. So, but we never know. Can't think for other fighters. I know I can think, the, you know, I can speak for myself, you know, psychologically on a widespread, but um, who knows what's going on inside of their heads. And, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the fight. I'm really looking forward to supporting the fight. Um, yeah, and it's, it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great fight. Who's the best heavyweight right now? You know, I got to land on the wall for this one. Uh, the best heavyweight right now. I mean, I mean, it, it would be, it would be between Wilder and Fury. You know, um, you know, I've, I've, I've answered this question and, but before. But would you have that same opinion if Joshua didn't lose? It depends on how you won. So let's say Joshua beat Ruiz. Okay, and and so what and what fashion? But let's say he didn't have the L. I'm just saying that's not the L, the L doesn't matter, you know, because you can lose a 12 round fight and still be a, a Wilder really just lost, you know, but he's still considerably you know one of the best. You know, it's like he he got outpointed, outpunched, whatever for for all of those rounds. You know, he's still being considered. You know, uh, so it doesn't matter, you know, if AJ wins or lose, how he loses. We know he's still a very talented person, but we're asking who's the best. So now we have to narrow, we have to narrow things down. And, you know, sometimes when you lose, it's like if I lost or when I lost, I was out of the number. I'm out of the question. I'm out of the ranks. And it's like, oh, okay, he's not mentioned anymore because, you know, he lost. So the loss does take away from, you know, um, your credibility. But some people just don't take an account of how you lost and why you lost and things like that. So let's just get, get back to the one and number two. Um, I would definitely say Fury, you know, but Wilder's a very special person that dude, man. I mean, to be able to, to be able to, you know, like, I mean, as a, as a fighter, aside from, aside from me being a fighter, you know, um, I look at the game and I look at and see, okay, if I was that much into boxing, which I'm really not, I'm just, I'm just in it because I'm because I'm in it. But I would definitely take 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 a fan to to be a Wilder fan for sure, for sure. Because it's like it's like I was I was the same way in, in, in different sports. I was so awkward. Couldn't do this. Couldn't do that. Basketball didn't have a left hand. Didn't didn't have a jump shot or whatever. But it still was most dominant. So those are the type of things to be like, yo. You are unorthodox, but can't nobody stop you, yo. Like, and it's just, it's just a good thing just to see somebody, you know, um, be faced with so many adversities and be faced with so many um, negatives, you know, in their techniques and stuff like that, and still be able to beat motherfuckers up, like. And so that's good. But Fury's very technical, you know, um, very aware, you know, very sassy, very he has he has great finesse. So if you're looking for the looker, 
you know, you look for, you look for, you look for, uh, you know, look for spirit for all the techniques and all the things like that. But you're looking for, if you're looking for somebody who, who you want to, you know, represent it. And Wilder definitely has that fear. People fear him. People fear Wilder. People don't fear Fury. People fear Wilder. You know, so it's, it's is that, that Mike Tyson type thing. Mm, yeah, Not that yeah. Level, but yeah, no, I know it, it might be that type of level as far as the boxes. People know, like you know, you know, pe 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 people know. It's like, it's like, yo, you want to fight with Wilder? Is it? Damn. Oh, but no, I mean, hey, what's going on, man? But uh, but no, I, I would I would think it's between them two, and um, and we, and we, we talking style versus uh versus versus the warrior mindset, you know. So they're both they're both the best at that. But you know, if, if you had to pick one, technically, you know, I would pick I would pick Fury. What, what do the Americans think of Tyson Fury going to WWE? Uh, I mean, Americans, I mean. I, I don't, I don't, I don't classify American thinking with you know England thinking or Russian thinking or Chinese thinking. I just it's thoughts, you know. These are people that are, you know. These are thoughts, and I think on a widespread of thing. But you know, um, that's what that's what superstars do, you know. So Mike Tyson do it. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we, we listen. People, you, you have people that are on right now that do publicity, publicity stunts, and it's and they like it's like what are you chasing? You know, so so to be in something to convert to some some other aspect of entertainment and and to be successful at it, you know, I mean, you got you got to hand clap for that. You know, um, and that's what entertainment is. People want to see you, so they want to see you doing this, see you doing that, and then you're cross marketing and you're bringing one form of one form of group, one a form of groups, you know, bringing them together, and you know, you're making these these people that watch wrestling. Oh, you can, okay, you're making them watch, you know, boxing now, and okay, you're. Uh, I don't know no wrestlers to the day, but I'm just gonna say old wrestlers like The Rock or Kurt Angle and them dudes. But you know, if you're a Kurt Angle fan now, you're a Tyson Fury fan. So when he has a fight, you're gonna be watching boxing now. So it's just a cross marketing. And it's all good, man. It's just it's, it's making the money. It's being it's, it's entertainment. That's what it is. It's a business at the same time. Champ, always a pleasure. Catch pleasure as well, you. man. You always remind me of a bit of a Malik Scott. That's my man. No, but I feel like we can keep on talking. Keep on. Oh talking. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my man. I, th I think that's the, I think that's the Philly the Philly. The Philly, uh, vibe. yeah, the Philly vibe, the Philly vibrations and frequency, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's what it is, man. Yeah. That's what it is. It's the Philly vibe, vibrations, you know what I mean? So. Always a pleasure, and hopefully we'll catch up with you. We've got Friday and Saturday. Pleasure as well. B.Y. Jennings on Instagram and Twitter. Oh. You already know what it is. Fright Hype. Yeah, though. B.Y. Jennings. Thank you very much. All right.